Hi, welcome to our channel. US confirms transfer of cluster munitions to Ukraine. The United States will provide the Ukrainian military with cluster munitions, U.S. National Secretary Advisor Jack Sullivan said at a press briefing. Commenting on a decision, Sullivan said that the United States will not leave Ukraine defenseless at any point during this conflict. He suggested that cluster munitions would serve to sustain Q's urgent need to waste quantities of artillery shells, while U.S. production of conventional artillery shells is ramping up, which will still take some time. He stressed that Russia has been using cluster munitions since the very beginning of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. We recognize that cluster munitions create a risk of civilian harm from unexploded ordnance, Sullivan said. This is why we deferred the decision for as long as we could. He branded Russia's use of cluster munitions in this conflict as utterly unacceptable, condemning Russia's targeting of civilian areas in breach of international law. Sullivan emphasized a notable distinction between the type of cluster munitions being used by Russia and those that the US will be supplying to Ukraine, saying that the ratio of unexploded DUD charged in much lower for US-made rounds. The officials stressed that the United States and its allies will have to assist Ukraine in post-war the mining of civilian areas anyway, regardless of whether Washington provides Kyiv with cluster munitions or not. He mentioned that US President Joe Biden approved the transfer of cluster munitions to Ukraine, an anonymous recommendation from his national security team. Sullivan admitted that this was a difficult decision. The US president agreed to provide the munitions only after consultations with allies and partners, as well as consultations with members of Congress. On the other hand, the US to announce $1.3 billion military aid package for Ukraine. Washington plans to announce another $1.3 billion military assistance package for Ukraine, Reuters reported on Julie. 18 seating to U.S. officials. According to the report, the package will focus on anti-air systems, UAV jamming equipment, combat drones and ammunition. In particular, it will include Vampire anti-UAV systems, Phoenix Ghost and Switchblade drones, and Australian-made drone shield systems. This equipment will be procured by the U.S. government directly from defense contractors as opposed to dipping deeper into U.S. military stocks. The announcement is expected to come within days, and the source underscore that the contents of the package are still subject to change. And Belgium, Luxembourg and the Netherlands to supply Ukraine with APCs. Belgium, Luxembourg and the Netherlands will transfer tracked armored personal carriers M113 to Ukraine. Defense Minister of the three countries said in a joint statement on July 18. We reaffirm our continued determination to support Ukraine in response to the ongoing unacceptable Russian aggression, the statement said. The Benelux countries will allocate M113 from their own reserves and ensure the vehicles are in good order. The armored personnel carriers are equipped with remote controlled weapon systems and mounts for 7.62mm or 12.7mm machine gun. In addition, Ukraine will receive a package of spare parts. The statement noticed that the equipment will be delivered to Ukraine in the coming months. And Russia says it struck targets in Ukraine in response to Crimea bridge attack. Russian Defense Ministry says plant manufacturing unmanned boats, fuel storage facilities targeted. Russia said Tuesday it struck targets in Ukraine in response to the attack on the bridge in Crimea for which Moscow holds Kyiv responsible. Tonight, the armed force of the Russian Federation inflicted a group relation strike with high-precision sea-based weapons. Acts against the Russian Federation were being plotted. Defense Minister's spokesperson Igor Konoshenko said in a statement, 
He said Ukraine was plotting attacks using unmanned boats, but Russia struck down their manufacturing plant near the city of Odessa. The spokesman added that fuel storage facilities of the Ukrainian army were destroyed in the cities of Mykolaiv and Odessa. At least two people were killed and a child was severely injured in a blast early Monday at the Catch Bridge, which connects Russia to the Crimean Peninsula that has been under control of Moscow since 2014. Russian President Vladimir Putin has accused Ukraine of being behind of the attack and Russia says massive Ukrainian attack foiled in Crimea. Russian Defense Minister says 28 Ukrainian drones jammed and shut down overnight. Russia said Tuesday it jammed or shut down dozens of Ukrainian drones foiling a massive attack on Crimea, a territory under Russian occupation since 2014. Last night, an attempt by the Kyiv regime to carry out attack using 28 unmanned aerial vehicles on objects on the territory of the Crimean Peninsula was stopped, the defense minister said in a statement. 17 drones were shut down and 11 jammed by Russian defense, the statement added. At least two people were killed and a child was severely injured in a blast early Monday at the Kerch Bridge, which connects Russia in the Crimean Peninsula. Russia Foreign Minister Maria Zakharova also blamed the US and the UK intelligence agencies claiming they provide direct assistance to Kyiv. Russian Deputy Prime Minister Marat Kashrunin said on Tuesday that the authorities managed to partly reverse the effects on the attack and the traffic has resumed on the off the line of the highway. On the other hand, Kremlin warns of risks in resuming grain deal without Russia. Black Sea Grain Initiative's routes very close to war zone, which must be taken into consideration in event of new agreement, says Kremlin spokesman. Kremlin warned on Tuesday about a risk that could arise if the Black Sea Grain deal is resumed without Russia. The Black Sea Grain Initiative's routes are very close to the war zone, which must be taken into consideration in the event of a new agreement, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov noted at a press conference in Moscow. This is a question that needs a response from our military because we are talking about a zone that is directly close to the area of combat activities where without appropriate guarantees certain risks arise. Therefore, if something is to be drafted without Russia, then these risks should be taken into account, he stressed. The Kremlin spokesman noted that he does not know which countries are ready to deal with such risks. Even if we take this grain transaction zone, it's no secret to anyone. It's an oblivious fact that this zone is used by the Kyiv regime for military purposes. This is a very important aspect that should not be overlooked. He emphasized it. A year ago, Turkey and UN, Russia and Ukraine signed an agreement in Istanbul to resume grain exports from three Ukrainian Black Sea ports. The deal had been renewed several times since then, and it was extended another two months on May 18. Under the grain deal, a joint coordination center was set up in Istanbul last year with officials from Russia, Turkey, Ukraine and the UN to oversee the shipments. However, Russia on Monday suspended the deal. In October last year, Moscow suspended the grain deal for several days due to Ukraine's attacks on the vessels of its Black Sea fleet which were carried out using the humanitarian corridor, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. When asked if Russian President Vladimir Putin intends to contact his Turkish counterpart Erdogan about resuming the deal, Peskov said nothing has been scheduled as of yet. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe.